Hello, welcome to a new video. The company Sharp decided to stumble their way into the charger market. They started off with naming them all Gallium Nitrate Chargers. Ugh. I mean, it's on the product. Hey, maybe they're onto something. A little boost in the instantaneous power department. In this video, I will be going through each of these Gallium Nitrate Chargers and hopefully they don't explode while making the video. Okay, it's a simple mistake, but it's nitride. It's a lattice of gallium and nitrogen, before being doped at least. Anyway, as usual, I will be checking out each charger for its efficiency, DC performance, isolation, and thermals. It will be interesting to see if one of these chargers will make the grade. There's affiliate links which are me a couple percent, but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. All of these sharp adapters come in cardboard boxes. They almost got it right, but still wrapped a bunch of these in a little plastic ring, which seems to have done nothing to protect the surface. They all come with a user manual and nothing else. They are all low cost, as I'll be checking out later on, so bare bones for what's included. First up is this little 20 watt charger. This has two ports, which is nice for a small charger like this. The USB A and C port can work together at relatively low wattages each, which is a nice bonus. This charger doesn't have fancy higher voltage modes, and only being 20 watts it doesn't really need them. It will deliver all 20 watts into either port though, so that's a nice addition. It has a safety listing, which, for the price point, is great. The power performance for this little charger is okay. It meets the basic requirements that it needs to. The idle power consumption is good, and for the power level, the efficiency is okay. It isn't setting any records, but for a low power charger, it will get the job done. Good for a phone and a watch or phone and earbuds, for example. The 35 watt charger is up next, and it has two USB-C ports, which is nice. It gives you just a little bit more power, but the power sharing is even, so it won't be able to do a laptop and a phone. More of a two phones kind of adapter, which is okay. The performance for this adapter does have some issues. The efficiency was a little low. If I added in some measurement tolerance, I'd probably just squeak by, but it's lower than others. The DC performance was actually good though. Low ripple and stable voltage. Can it have both? The 45 watt adapter is next. This goes back to the USB A and C port. It does uneven power sharing again. The adapter has PPS or programmable power supply modes. Actually, these all have PPS modes and none of the documentation even mentions that. The USB-C port does have a renegotiation when plugging into the USB-A port and these all also do that. This one made quite a lot of noise in various modes as well. So something to think about. That audible noise is usually a deal breaker for a lot of people. The performance for this charger showed some instability in the DC output voltage. The ripple was measurably a bit higher in some modes. The efficiency and idle performance were fine though. So it's gotta be one or the other. Again, why can't it be both? Okay, the 65 watt charger. Maybe this one can solve some of the problems. This one adds another USB port. The very typical long charger design. Yeah, it's gonna have some problems staying in sockets. It does have the extra watts to be able to power a laptop though. The performance for this charger is okay. It has good DC voltage and ripple. The efficiency and idle power were average. Someone has to be average. But overall, I didn't find any issues with the charger. The 140 watt charger is last. This is the big one. It is noticeably different than the other chargers in a few ways. One, it lacks a safety listing. I'll look at the thermals later on. It does offer something I actually like in that it will share the two USB-C ports as two 60 watt ports. It won't deliver 140 watts this way, but at least it can charge and power two moderate sized laptops. The power performance for this adapter was not great in the low end. The idle power was a bit too high. The voltages were actually on the high side, which is unusual, so regulation was also a little bit weird. The ripple was low and the efficiency was fairly high in the middle range and up through the top end, so not the worst thing I've seen either. Actually, efficiency wise, as a whole, this does better than most other 140 watt adapters. All AC adapters have to have some separation or isolation between the mains and the DC side of the power adapter. This separation is important so you don't get shocked. This is measured as leakage current. The lower the leakage current, the better the adapter performs. In practical terms, this is the tingling feeling you get when using your laptop or phone with certain adapters. In terms of isolation, all these adapters met the basic requirements of low leakage. Not bad. Okay, thermal time. These aren't the most efficient adapters out there, but they did manage to get heat out. 
They stayed on for the full hour. They may get hot, but they didn't turn off. So they're probably not going to last a long time since they do allow them to get hot, but they also don't turn off. It's a trade-off of thermal shutdown level and product longevity. Most choose to let it get hot. Time to do some comparisons. There are quite a few power levels, so I only picked a few comparables. The IKEA and the Apple adapters are what I ended up going with. In terms of weights, these adapters all ended on the lighter end of the scale. The 20 watt adapter feels like air. In terms of comparisons, they are in line with other offerings. They do a bit better density wise versus some of the Apple offerings. In terms of the idle performance, these are all over the place. The 20 watt is very low, but it's also the lowest wattage up to the 140 watt, which does pour here. Oddly, the 35 watt right in the middle is also not great. When looking at these on the plot, they are all over the place. Sharp occupies both the lower wattages and the higher wattages. One of these is borderline complying with the energy efficiency standards and one is real close. There are plenty of other adapters that do better here. In terms of the average performance, these adapters average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE 6 efficiency, that means 25 to 100% load efficiency, is all over the place. As I mentioned, that 140 watt adapter is not bad. It's not Apple good, but it's working on it. Most of the other 140 watt chargers ended up in the same area or a little lower. I'd like to see them hit 90% efficiency mark, but that's asking for a lot from a bunch of budget chargers. Okay, let's talk about value. Yeah, these things are cheap, and maybe that's the reason you might want one. They are basically representing good value for the category they are in. The thing is the IKEA represents better value still. Apple, of course, is low on the value proposition, but is that a surprise? The 20 watt ran away from this chart for some reason. And looking at all of these, the 65 watt seems the best value, and it has the least issues from testing, at least. Conclusion time. So it's the first round of a power adapters from Sharp. They are most certainly dull. The chargers feel like a bunch of afterthoughts. Just get something on the market as fast as possible from the cheapest maker they can find. Is it different than anything else on the market? Not really. They are really inexpensive at least. So from that perspective, buy two and when one breaks, you have a second one. So for me, the losers are the 45 watt because it has the stability issues and makes noise. The 35 watt is out for its low efficiency and poor idle performance. The 140 watt is out because it lacks a safety listing and also has poor idle performance. The 20 watt adapter is fine if you want to charge a little slower and have two low power devices to charge. You don't need to charge at 30 or 40 watts if you're leaving it plugged in overnight. I think I have to say it. The one I'd pick from this brand is the 65 watt adapter. The value proposition is good. I'm still not going to use it. I have better chargers. But if you have to pick one of these, the better of the pile is the 65 watt one. It has enough watts for a laptop and can handle three small devices pretty easily. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.